So this is Jenning, this is Adrian, and me is Jessalyn. Three of us is ex colleague and we work together in projects. So we thought that since this is an NGMY conference, so we must use Angular to do the website, right? Okay? Okay, so this is the website. Not sure you guys have browsed it, browsed through it. So you can see that there's some animations and one thing is there's a lot of uh, images. But if you see when you browse it, the, the performance should be still quite good. Okay, so this is what we'll talk about it today. So we'll talk about um, the minimal cost because we have, um, we have budget. It's, this is a very budgeted conference. So how do we use minimal cost to build a website? And um, how do we search, uh, well, how do we do an SEO? Because we want people to come and buy the ticket. This is how we need to do the SEO. And then also we'll talk about uh, collaborations because it's three of us working in this project. How do we enhance collaboration together? Then we'll talk about performance. How do we um, enhance the performance of this website so that you have a good browsing experience? And we'll talk about the, some techniques we use in the applications as well. Okay, then I will pass the mic to um, Jenning to talk about uh, minimal cost. Okay, um, for this website, we really don't have the budget to do it. So we are really looking for all the ways that we can save costs on. Um, yeah, we're looking for a lot of free stuff. There are many options out there. If uh, I've only learned that from this project. Uh, yeah, so our cost is um, targeting at zero dollar. And so far we have spent about zero dollar. How do we do that? How do you do that? Right? How do you do that? There's uh, four factors to this. Um, one, uh, we built it as an SPA, um, meaning it's just static files, it's easy to deploy. And there are a lot of options out there that can provide stat uh, free tier static file hosting. And Firebase being one of them, so we are hosting our website in Firebase. Um, there's also no DB. Um, even though there are some CMS-like content in the website, but uh, we'll elaborate that later on if there's time. Uh, for this project, because it's the first Angular conference in Southeast Asia, we started off with a blank workspace. Um, and to do that, we type in ng-new. Usually, you will start creating a project from, start creating the application from this command itself. But we pass in the create application force uh, flag to disable the crea uh, application creation. Next, we generate the application using the ng-generate application. Okay. Um, during the development phase, we did a lot of prototyping. We wanted, again, something free, and Netlify is that. Um, it, it really allows us to build uh, prototype rapidly. Uh, Easily and easily as well because uh, you just drop your files into Netlify and it'll work. So on the SEO part, uh, we wanted people to easily find us, be able to easily find us. Um, if you type in NGMY into Google search, you'll see that it's the first result. And we also want the website to be readily share shareable uh, with all the relevant images and text um, as soon as you paste the link in. Um, to do that, uh, we need to configure the correct title and meta tags. Um, and these are really the, one of the essential things that you need to look at if you are doing SEO. With Angular, we can use it, we can do this using a service, um, and you call the function in the service every time the component in, ng on init. So you pass in the title and meta tag that you want to update, and it will do that. Next, um, we didn't want the search engine crawler to index our dev site, so we set up the robot.txt for different environments. We have two sets of robots.txt, and for the prod, we call it the .prod.txt, because why we, need this, uh, why we need this? Next, um, in the build output, asset output, we set, specify the robots.txt as the output asset. Then in the 
Angular's own file replacement feature. We replace the robot.txt with the prod one. So anytime you run the build prod, it'll take the prod robots and do that. So it'll allow the robot to crawl only your production site, but not your dev site. Next, I'll pass on to Adrian to tell us how we can implement SEO in SBA. So I'm going to talk about uh, how we implement SEO in, in SBA. So um, the SBA problem, the SEO problem in SBA, right, is when the server is sent the HTML to the client browser. So the client browser will look be like something like this. Uh, and so the set, so you can see that the title and the meta tag is not generated. So the the meta tag and title is generated once the uh, client browser execute the JavaScript. So the title and the meta tag only will be appended to the DOM. So at the point of time, right, the, um, the Google crawler, right, basically is a bit too late to crawl because during that time, the meta tag is not displaying. So to counter this issue, right, so we have one solution that is we pre-render the website during the build time. So we treat, when we trigger the build, right, normally the, um, normally the CRI will help us to uh, build the file, JS bundle, the index.html, CJS, and CS, and so on. So in order to do the pre-render, right, we need to open the browser. So we browser will go to each page of the URL to launch the URL and generate the static site. So, and deploy all the file to the server. So in this step, right, open browser and save all the, the content into a static site so is what we call gen pre-rendering. So in order to achieve that, right, automated, automated achieve that, right, so we need to use the puppeteers. So if you don't ever heard about puppeteer, right, so puppeteer basically is a programmer Chrome browser. So in the high level, like, basically this Chrome browser will help you to launch the page, and what you need to do is just provide the URL. So the uh, puppeteer basically will based on the URL to capture the content and then save it as the static site as what you name for. So, so go back to the, the build, right? So basically we append the puppeteer in the, pro, in the build process. So, and next will help us to capture the file and deploy the, all the file to the server. So how we achieve that, right? Basically we need to extend the Angular CRI webpacks. So it's that it need two things to do it, doing this. First, we need to install the custom webpack. So the custom webpack basically will help you to create the cust uh, it will allow you to create a custom configuration. And the second plugin that we need to install, that is the pre-render SPA plugin. So basically this, this plugin helps us to pre-render and save it as a static file. But behind the scene, basically, is a puppeteers. So this is basically our, our custom configuration look like. So what we need to provide is the, um, the directory that we're going to save the static file and the route our website have. So when you have this both thing, just needs to pass to the pre-render SPA plugin and the plugin will do the job for you. So beside that, right, be, beside that, we also need to update the Angular JSON file to it enable to use the custom configuration. So I, not go, I will not go further detail on this. If you guys interested, you can go to the officer site and see the documentation. So bes beside the pre-rendering, right, the site map is also necessary because we, non, we need the caller to know our site better. So how we generate the site map automatically is same as how we, how we configure the custom web pack to automat automatically generate the site map. So yes, um, yeah, we need, to, we need to extend the CRI as well. So what we need to do is create a plugin called, not create, but it's install a plugin, it's called create file webpack. Basically the create file webpack helps you to create a file. So once you create the file, right, what you need to do is ingest the, the, the content into the sitemap. So same as just now I mentioned, you, what you need to do is create the destination, provide that destination, you're going to save the file, the file name, and also the content. So we create our custom method, right, basically we'll generate the the 
uh, generate a uh, sitemap URL based on the route we provided. So you okay, next. So we also use Bing Webmaster Tool and Google Search Console to monitor our SEO. So apart from that, right, we also submit our sitemap to the to them to to in, instruct them to uh, to know to know our website route well. So for the correlation part, right? Um, we know that uh, it will be more than one of us if we're booking our on our project. So which is three of three three of us. So we work we work uh, together. Sometimes we work independently in different time. So the quality code of quality concern is important, and we set up a code linting for every commit. Apart and also we also. Uh, set up the CICD um, pipeline to do the auto deployment. So when the automatic is set up right, you, we no need to do the manual job to do the auto deployment. So for every development, right, we create a feature branch. Once the feature branch is complete, we will do the local commit. And this will trigger the linting. So we for the automate linting, we are we are using the husky basically. So the husky basically will provide you the hook. So you allow you to put a command, pre-commit, and this pre-commit allow you to put your linting, linting command inside it. So this is something look like. So for once the, the feature is complete, right, this we will create a pull request. Once the pull request is approved, we will merge to the master branch. Once the merging is completed, right, basically we will trigger the build so the, and also the trigger the deployment. So basically, trigger the build and trigger deployment is handled by Travis CI. So uh, Travis CI basically will handle for us, and this is so this is free for public project. And this is how our CSCD pipeline look like. So we are targeting on the master branch. So and also before we doing the deployment, we install the Firebase tool. Basically, Firebase tool is allow you to deploy your project, your build into a Firebase hosting, and after that we will trigger the script yarn deploy. So the yarn deploy basically consists of three things, lean, code linting, build, and deploy to Firebase. So next I pass to Jocelyn. Okay. Good. Okay. Good, right? They are first time speaker actually. Okay. So next we'll talk about uh, performance. And for performance, we want to ensure that there's pleasant browsing experience for everyone. And I thought it's pleasant, but if it's not pleasant, then you come tell us, okay? So uh, page speeds actually matters to SEO page ranking. That's why we want the page to load as fast as possible as well. So this, um, according to a research, this is uh, what the page weight generally is. Images always is taking a, a whole lot of weight out of a page. The next is JavaScript, and then font, and then CSS, then HTML, okay? So this is how our page looks like, the performance now. So we measure it using page speeds inside, um, or you can use Lighthouse to do that. Lighthouse is within your Chrome browser. Just pull out your dev tools, you can do that. So this is the, the, the score that we have. Not bad, right? 94 and then 100. Of course, because we are showing you, right? That's why we need to make sure that it is OK. Um, we'll talk about performance uh, and how do we enhance the performance in images, font, JavaScript, CSS, and others. Let's go through image. Okay, so can you imagine that when you browse to a website, for example, just you browse to NGMI website, I load, I, I give you like five MB data, probably you didn't even really scroll down yet. So this is not good. So how do we enhance that is, oh, before that, for example, let's take this example. I just want to ask one question, look at this. And that little white thing, a little white pattern is a SVG. It's only one SVG for one pattern, and then we replicate that on screen. Can you guess how big is that one white, white, uh, white box, white pattern? One KB. Okay, you thought it's one KB, right? Nice. It's actually. 30 KBs, but it actually didn't carry any meaning. We didn't know this because we just used, right? We just find, oh, this is nice, then we put that in. After that, then we realized, oh my God, this is actually not good. 
Actually, basically why the size is so big because it contains some metadata, a lot of unused metadata that contain in the SVG. So you can use these, to these tools, SVG, oh my god, because it's basically oh my god, right? To actually enhance that, you can, <laughs> you can, um, you can just drag and drop to the browser and then use that. Or you can automate that. Um, they have a NPM package where you can install and automate that. Every time you check in the SVG, just automate it to run. You can do that. So we are able to shift 32 KB to 2 KB. Clap, clap, clap. Okay, I saved your data. Okay. Next is talk about WebP. WebP is something like PNG but smaller. Why do I say it looks like PNG? Because WebP support transparent image. In our application, a lot of time we need to use transparent image. And uh, WebP images are generally 25 to 35% smaller than JPEG and PNG because the way they do the compressions is different. And WebP have arise in all these browsers except the new IE, okay? Okay, okay. Then, um, it's, but it's okay because 75, 78% of the global user is on the other three browsers. So you can use that. And um, in fact, let me show you the size of a PNG and WebP. So if it, this is a PNG, then it's like 119 KB, but WebP is only 28. And for the same quality, the Roti Chana image is basically much more smaller. See that? Okay. But you say that, oh, because I, I have user that use Safari browser as well. How can I cover both? So this is how you can do it. You can use a picture tag, and then you can use the um, picture tag is a tag that is in HTML. Then you can specify the source and then source set. You say that if the browser support WebP, you just load the first line. And if the browser doesn't support WebP, for example, like Safari, it will fall back to load the IMG tag, which is PNG. So in fact, the, the, the website, if you load with your uh, Safari browser, it will be bigger. But if you use Chrome or others browser, your size will be much, much more smaller. You can test it. OK? And um, want to talk, next, one want to talk about some image compressions. Um, Generally, uh, we have looseless image, which means the quality is still persists. And then we have loosey image, which we lose a little bit of quality and make it a little bit pixelated. But it's very good for performance. Okay? The tricky point is, how, what are the point, like how many percentage of the quality that we want to target? Do we target zero because it's like black and white? Or do we target 100 but the file size is very big? Um, this is a general advice. So if you reduce the image quality, to 80 to 85 percent, it will reduce the file size by 30 to 40 percent. But you have minimal effects on the image quality. So you need to play around with your setting and see how much you want to reduce the image quality and it still looks nice. I give you an example. So in our, in our page, right, the first image, the first background image that you see, um, before, we, we, before we do some um, compressions, it's 495 KV. But after we reduce the picture quality uh, to 80%, it's only 180 KV. So it's much more smaller, but you don't really see very big difference. And we are okay with that. So you can try that out. Next, responsive images. Um, so image in desktop is bigger than the image in the mobile phone. So we can actually serve different image in, uh, dif different, uh, in different device. So for example, in our case, the desktop will take the desktop data rate will take 28 KB. But in the mobile, because it's much more smaller, we, sh we show you a smaller images, which is only 12 KB. Okay, so this is how we do it. See, we use back the same uh, picture tag, but what we do is, is we can set the media to max width, uh, how many of the web max width, then if it's within this, then you load different um, image URL. If it's the other, then you use the other. There's many ways for you to set um, different, uh, to set responsive images. Check out the link that I put down um, below there. Then you can find out there are different ways to do it. Okay. And um, for the image quality, for resize, compress, and format, and everything we mentioned about the image here, you can use this app, squash.app, to do it. This tool is open sourced by the Chrome team. By, uh, the Chrome team, so you can use that. It's a drag and drop, you just drag your image and then tweak a little bit, see the quality and then download it. It's very easy to use. Or if you want to automate it in your build process, right? you can use the NPM packages like I mentioned below, ImageMean, Sharp and others. You can use these two to automate the image uh, and uh, performance enhancement. 
Okay, so in summary, a performance image is has having appropriate format, use WebP is possible, and having appropriate compressions, which you can choose um, just compress your image by the quality that you are okay with it, and then use appropriate display size, show smaller image and bigger image in others. Next, um, Jenning will talk about font. Um, so for font stuff, All right, um, so for font optimization, um, by default, a browser will not show your text until your font is loaded. Um, we call that the flash of invisible text. Um, so you see the images, but you don't see the text. Um, the alternative is the flash of unstyled text. So basically what it means is the browser will actually show the unstyled text and then show the style text when the font is loaded. Um, to do that, you in the font display property to your font face declaration, and then you assign the swap uh, value. If we are using Google Font API, uh, if anyone else is using, this is a new feature by Google. Um, basically, it has the same behavior of font display swap, but you, all you need to do is append the display equals swap into the API call. And then, um, there are times where we don't actually need the whole variant of the font. Um, so just specify the font weights that you are going to use, and then it will actually serve you the smaller file sizes. Um, if this is how you load your Google fonts, uh, you actually cause the render to block. Um, so how do you not do that? We use the CSS imports. Uh, with this, it will actually allow the render to uh, go on without blocking it. Um, on icon side, um, it's really usual that we load the whole icon font into the website, um, but we end up using maybe three or four of it. So you might want to consider uh, cherry picking the icons. There is a website called iconmoon.com um, where you can do that. Basically, you cherry pick the icons that you are going to use and it'll generate another font file, icon font file for you, and you can use that font file instead. Um, the result is really small and you save up maybe nine, up to 90% of your data. Um, next, um, Adrian is going to tell us how we optimize on the JavaScript part. Uh, so for the JavaScript, right? In our how uh, we already implement lazy loading to our Angular application. So what is lazy loading? So for the tra traditional single page application, right? Every time when we build our files, our JavaScript will will be shipped in the big bundles. So for the modern single page application, once you apply the lazy loading, right? So the CLI basically will help you to split the big bundle into a separate small bundles. So this will help up on the uh, reducing the DOM computer time. So for example, right, when you see a website, you only navigate to the speaker page. So you only uh, load the necessary JavaScript file. It's not a big bundle. So this is how our code look like. So, and, and this, this syntax is basically the latest Angular 8 syntax. And for how we and we we are also disabled the chain detection mechanism for subtree of the component tree. So what this thing look like what this thing is is so by default right Angular behind the scene is always listened to the changes. So they will somehow will cause some processing performance. So if you add this line of code, chain detection strategy dot on post, right? Basically, the only the angler will only change the descent, change check the detection when receive a different input. So we also defer our JavaScript. So what is defer JavaScript? Defer I mean that by default, right? If you don't defer JavaScript, the normal not the normal flow is will be like this. The HTML will be the HTML pass HTML passing will be paused until the JavaScript is downloaded and executed. If we defer the JavaScript, right, the 
the the HTML parsing will be and JavaScript downloading is run parallelly, and the JavaScript execution will be run after the HTML parsing is complete. So this will this will basically help out, help out on the DOM compute term time. So what to do is just need to add a defer attribute to the script tag. That's it. So this part, right? Uh, I don't, <laughs> I don't think it will be covered. <laughs> Next, yep. Next class should be finished. Yeah. No. Next class should be finished. Yeah. And not not. <laughs> okay. Uh, as we are using the Angular line, so uh, for the performance optimization, right? It's a lot of performance are already built in. For example, minification, agrify, differential loading, a lot of time compression, but uh, GG, GG is not a part of uh, Angular, la, but it's, you could able to configure on the Firebase to allow you to use the GG. So differential loading is one of the new feature that new, newly added in the Angular 8. So what this thing do is um, the Angular CI basically will help you to uh, generate two bundles. One bundle is for the modern browser, which is less polyfill, and and the file size is JS bundle is small. And uh, another bundle is the for old browser with the necessary polyfill, but in return in big file size. So eventually, this thing is is advantage for the modern browsers. It's only load the necessary um, necessary bun JS bundle only. Okay, due to the time limit, we skip some of the slide. But the slide will give to you in full. You can you can read that and then and then and then follow the step and see what we are doing. And we open source our code as well. But there are something that we want to mention. We really want to mention behind the scene. Like you see all the effort that we put into the website, but probably you just browse it like one or two times. But it's okay because we like to do it. And something behind the scene. Do you realize that we have a lot of images and and all these icons across this uh, across the, the 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 places? Do you know, do you think that it look nice? Yes, yes, right. You have to say yes because you know people use a lot of effort to do this. And we also, and you see the mama backdrop just now. Have anyone take a photo with the mama backdrop? If not yet, if you didn't realize it's on the other side of the registration booth, the other side, just go and take a photo. You know, this, this one is hand-drawn by a very, very talented and painted by a very, very talented um, designer, which is Jenata, which is sitting in front, that's holding a time up, a time up, a time up. Can you stand out and facing it? She's telling us it's time up, but she draw all this and... Without that, we, we can't we can you can put that in the team in our website because the team is surround is surround by the uh, we are using all the uh, mama icons and yeah just want to tell you that there's a lot of effort that we put put in into doing this website and you have anything to say? Uh. How do you, how do you feel like first time talking in front of your friends? Uh, a bit nervous. You know, but he is doing great, right? Give a hand applause. Okay, you? Uh, nervous. Actually, we had a last minute dry run. Um, we nearly didn't make it. Uh, we, we really started a lot during the dry run. So luckily, I mean, luckily I didn't do as bad in life. Okay. <laughs> Good. Okay, with that, let's, so thank you everyone. Thank you.